Hi everybody, welcome to another video here. This is Jeff. We're going to show you today how to remove baseboards from the walls in a very easy and efficient, fast manner. Now, if you take a look at these baseboards we got here, these are old style, really gnarly, crappy little baseboards. And this is what always makes me mad about the builders here in Florida, because they always charge you buku bucks for these fancy properties that they claim they're selling you. But then on the trim and stuff, they really they put the screws to you big time. They just give you this really thin, nasty stuff here. This is, I mean, it's so thin and cheap and worthless, you can barely distinguish it from the, the drywall, all right? So we're going to be getting rid of this because we're putting down wood flooring here and we are going to put in a much, much more fancy baseboard. So very similar to the carpet tax strips, these are my, my tools of choice. I just a hammer and the demo bar here, of course. And I use the five and one tool quite a bit. And this is your most important one because this one gets you started. A lot of people are unaware that when baseboards are put onto the wall, they're glued along the top with caulk. They run a bead of caulk along there. The caulk is actually stronger than all of the nails. So in my opinion, the, the caulk has the strength of a thousand nails. So you gotta score that with the utility knife here. So let's take a look down here. We're going to start back here in the corner. And what I do is I just come right along the top and I'll just show you right here in this one spot. See how I dig into it right there? See right there, you can see how it's just dug right into it with the knife and then we're just going to carve along the top. So I'll, I'll pull the knife out here, I'll go over to the corner and start. And you can see how it's cutting right through the caulk as I go along the top there. See? In this case here, it, it almost pulled itself off the wall. So then, and you, and you want to be careful about not breaking the drywall. So that's why I use a wider piece like this guy here. So I know that the nails are probably going to be close to the end. So you just pry it right out. And it's, it's that simple. See how it just pops right out? Um, this made it good for me because this guy was somewhat lazy. He did two screw, or the two, two nails rather. He shot in two brad nails here. And it looks like they glued onto the back side, but I think he missed his mark or didn't put it on thick enough because it didn't seem to be adhering at all there. And now that you have the first little piece done, that opens up this second spot here for you. And I'm gonna come right along here too. Same thing, I'll just come along. This was already dry and cracking anyway, it looks like. I can almost pull this off with my hand. See, look, sometimes you get really lucky and you can just pull off the entire piece all, all the way down the wall like that. And we can, Oh, that to uh, the fact that the guy um, didn't put a whole lot of nails in there and they, they weren't very thorough about the way they caulked it. I don't understand why, if you look at this here, see, why did they need to use a huge thick nail like that when we typically use, um, you know, the small brad nails. And, the, and once you caulk it, it's not going to move ever. So. They must have had some issues with this originally. Maybe it was popping back out and somebody came in later and added some of these nails. I just don't know. But, uh, I can tell you that's not normal. That's not what we normally see. So that's pretty much all there is to it. All right, so now we're gonna start on this next section here. And you start right in the corner there and just dig in, cut through all that cloth right there behind it. And again, this is pretty much popping itself off the wall, which is a bad testament to the way the guys originally installed this, because normally it comes off with a lot more effort than this. So it's better for me, and hopefully you'll have the same look. Now, the reason why you don't want to just come right here and pry right here, because I haven't sliced the caulk yet, right? And if you try that, what's going to happen is you're going to end up pulling paint, pulling drywall paper off. So that's why you always want to score it. That way you know exactly where it's going to separate. Because if you don't score it, it will make up its own mind as to where it separates. So you got to tell that. You got to help it along. So I just come along every few feet. Like that. And I know that I have to start right here at this point again. So 
But here you can see I didn't even use the big tool. I was just using this one here and the utility knife. Done. Um, what I tell people too is I don't always like to throw this wood out. If you have a chop saw handy and you're doing a lot of maybe some patchwork around the house, I would cut these up into like 12 inch strips and save them and I use these as backing. So if I have to cut and patch a huge hole here in the drywall, you, you use these as backing behind it to put your new drywall piece in. So I try not to throw out anything unless I really have to. You, your goal is to keep materials out of the landfill whenever possible. So, that's our video for today on baseboards. We hope you liked it. And if you did like it, give it a thumbs up down below here. And you can click on the round icon you see there to subscribe to us. Or you can click on either of these two videos that you see on either side here and uh, learn some more about remote.